Hello, lately I've been receiving a lot of questions both online and in the office about how I conduct my seven day candle magic moon rituals. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the tools and the steps that I use to make the most of these powerful moon phases. So the first thing you need to do is to select a candle. Now I have a cat, so I prefer to use the tall seven day glass vigil candles because it helps to keep the flame safely contained inside. If pets are not an issue for you, you can select a tall pillar candle instead. Now I prefer to purchase my candles from my local metaphysical shop because I find they have the greatest variety as well as the most reasonable prices. But you can also find them in places like Target, both in the store as well as online. And a friend of mine picks hers up at the dollar store. So once you select the type of candle, you're going to need to select a color. And different colors help us to manifest different types of energies into our life. Now white is a great choice for just an overall cleansing and blessing. If you want to use your candle to, as protection or to help you to banish something from your life, black would be a better choice. If you're looking for just overall prosperity and luck, you could choose yellow. Orange is a great color to help to manifest new opportunities. If you're looking to add prosperity and growth to a specific work situation, then green is a beautiful choice. Um, if it's love or passion that you're looking to add into your life, then red is a wonderful candle color to pick. And then blue is also just a beautiful, overall peaceful, healing color that helps to enhance communication. So once you have your candle selected, it's time to prepare, or um, we often use the word fix, your candle to help serve as a conduit to help you to manifest your specific intention. So we're gonna talk about the new moon ritual first. Now the new moon is a wonderful time to think about what you want to bring into your life or attract into your life. And um, you're going to fix your candle a very specific way to make the most of this energy. Now, wherever you get your candle, chances are it has picked up some energies from, you know, just being in the store or from the shipping process or the making process. And it's very important to cleanse your candle of those energies first. So there are a few different tools that you can use to do that. A lot of traditions like to use what is called Florida water. Now, I have used this in the past. It's incredibly effective but I find the smell to be very, very strong for me. So I often choose something like rose water or perhaps my own essential oil blend to cleanse the outside of the candle instead. Um, so once you select what you wanna to use to cleanse it, you need to do so in a specific way. So since we're talking about the new moon, you're going to put whatever spray, whatever it is that you're going to use, and you're going to cleanse the outside of the candle in an upward motion. So this upward motion represents bringing things into your life. And then you can cl cleanse the rim of the candle in a clockwise motion, which also represents attracting or bringing in new energies. And then the, you'll do the base as well in a clockwise motion. So once you have cleansed the outside of your candle, you're going to use a chopstick or maybe even a screwdriver to poke seven holes inside of the wax. Now, since this is the new moon, we're going to do these holes in a clockwise motion. And the holes just need to be deep enough for a drop of oil to fit inside. So once you have poked your seven holes, you are going to select an oil to drip into each of the seven holes. Now, the types of oil that you can use are endless. Some of the ones that I've used in past new moon rituals have been orange oil, patchouli oil. I recently purchased a specific abundance blend from a local store that I use as well. Um, so once you've selected your oil, you're just gonna very carefully place a drop in each of the seven holes. And another thing that is part of many traditions is adding herbs to the candle. Now, 
the new moon is a time to add, you know, more attracting type herbs. So ones that I've used in the past have been cinnamon, allspice, clove. They're all associated with abundance. Um, now, just like with the oils, the types of herbs are endless. So if you have another oil that, or another herb that you use for those purposes, I encourage you to do so. Um, and just like the specific blend that I got at the metaphysical store, they also make specific herb bundles that you can purchase for this, for this purpose as well. So once you've selected your herb, you're just gonna kind of just sprinkle it on the top of the candle in a clockwise motion, if it's the new moon. And just a little heads up, the first time I did this, I went a little overboard with my herb sprinkling and it created like a little bonfire effect. So a little goes a long way. I would just maybe do maybe like three pinches and just gently sprinkle it around. Um, so once you have prepared the candle, then it's time to write your intention or your prayer. Now, I sometimes, I, I do it two different ways. If I can keep my intention and my prayer concise, then what I'll do is I'll just take a post-it note and then trace the candle, you know, trace it around the candle to have a circle that is perfectly matches underneath. And then I write my intention or my prayer specifically um, bring, you know, the intention is something specific that will bring in or add or attract or add some sort of abundance in my life to make the most of that new moon energy. Now, a lot of times the intention or the prayer that I write is a little bit more wordy and it doesn't fit on this perfect little circle. So in that case, you can just write it on a regular piece of notebook paper, taking as much space as you need. And then you're going to fold that paper in a very specific way. So since we're talking about the new moon right now, we are going to take the paper and we're going to fold the paper toward you to represent that you wanna bring this abundance to you. So then you'll move your candle or you'll move your paper again in a clockwise motion and then you'll fold it toward yourself again move it in a clockwise motion and just keep folding until it's small enough to easily fit underneath the candle. So then you'll place your candle on top of your intention and then it is time to light the candle. And as you light your candle, restate your intention or your prayer verbally. Now this ritual is called a seven day candle magic ritual but oftentimes the candle will burn for more than seven days. It all depends upon how long this candle is lit in your space. Um, so obviously for safety reasons, you're not going to leave your candle burning if you're not home or when you're sleeping. Um, so in that case, you're not going to just blow the flame out because that symbolizes that the intention or the prayer is over. Instead, you're going to extinguish your flame by just placing a snuffer over it, or you could use a fire safe dish to put over the top and extinguish it that way. And doing, it, doing so in this mindful way is like putting a pause button on this candle. And then when you wake up or when you come home, you're going to reignite that flame and then once again, restate your intention or your prayer. All right, so moving on to the full moon ritual. Now the full moon is all about releasing and letting go. Um, and we're once again, we're going to have to cleanse the candle that you choose before you fix it or you prepare it. So you will use either your Florida water, your rose water, or an essential oil cleansing blend, spray on a cloth, and you are going to use that and move the cloth in a downward motion to symbolize that you are releasing and letting go. And then as you cleanse the rim, you're gonna move in a counterclockwise motion and the same with the base. You'll just move in a counterclockwise motion. So once your candle has been cleansed, it is time to fix it or to prepare it. So you'll use your chopstick or your screwdriver to poke your seven holes but this time you're going to go in a counterclockwise motion for the full moon. 
and then you will place a drop of oil in each of the seven holes in a counterclockwise motion. Now the oils that I use for the full moon, um, just like with the new moon, the possibilities are endless. But some of the oils that I've used in the past have been lemon, sandalwood, cedar wood, or you can select a specific blend that is designed to release and to let things go. So you'll drop you know, one oil in each of those and then you'll do herbs. Um, some of the herbs that I've used during the full moon have been sage, rosemary, angelica root, or you can purchase a specific releasing bundle from a local shop. And then once again, remember a little goes a long way. You'll sprinkle it in a counter clockwise motion and then your candle is ready to go. So after the candle has been prepared, it's time again to write your intention. So this time your intention or prayer will be about what you want to release, let go, or surrender from your life. And you can write it on your little paper that fits perfectly underneath. Or if your intention is a little bit longer, you can go ahead and write it on a regular piece of paper. And then this time we're going to fold it a little bit differently than we did in the full moon, during the new moon. So for the full moon, you're going to fold your paper away from you to symbolize that you are ready to let these things go. And then you'll move it in a counterclockwise motion and fold it away and then a counterclockwise motion again and fold it once again. And you'll keep doing that until it's the right size to fit beautifully underneath your candle. And then you'll light the flame, restating your intention, restating your prayer, keep it going until it's time to extinguish it if you leave or go to bed and then snuff it out just like we did for the new moon. Okay, well now that you know how to prepare either your full moon or your new moon candle, it's time to place your candle in a very special place and that's completely up to you. I spend a lot of time in my living room, especially at night when the candles are going. So I like to place my candle on just a, like a little mini altar that I have nearby. Um, that way every time I pass by or I look at it, it reminds me to reset that intention, to use that candle to serve as a conduit. And then, you know, obviously it reminds me to take action in the physical world to help those, these intentions to manifest even faster. Now, what you place on your altar, you know, should, you know, give a little thought to that. Sometimes people like to put religious items that are meaningful to them on the altar. I love crystals and stones, so I like to surround my candles with different types of crystals, depending upon which phase that we're in. Um, obviously, during the new moon, I want to have you know crystals that are more associated with abundance, prosperity, healing. Um, with the full moon, I usually choose crystals and stones that are more protective and help to release or to pull out negative energy. And if you are in need of any crystals or stones, I have quite a variety available on my online store. You can visit mindfulmystic.com and then just find the online crystal store tab and it will take you there and you can see what I have available. And I ship those out all throughout the United States. Um, right now I'm just shipping in the United States. Um, obviously too, if you already have crystals or stones, use what you have just to create a little sacred altar where your candles can do their magic. Now, a lot of times I will put more than one candle on my altar. Sometimes I have more intentions, more than one intention. If that's the case, I like to dedicate a candle to each specific intention. And when I do that, I often notice that even though I light them at the same time and extinguish them at the same time, the candles often burn differently. Um, you can see differences in the wax, in the smoke. Sometimes candles will have um, remnants of wax on the glass or you might see soot. Um, sometimes the flames will dance or make noises or go out or just burn at a really rapid pace. All of these things are meaningful in some way. So if you are curious as to what each of these elements represents, just go ahead and give this th video a thumbs up or leave a comment um, below, just indicating that you're curious about that. And if that is, if there's a lot of curiosity about that within the community, then I will write or I'll con 
I will um, do another video that addresses each of those. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If this ritual is in alignment with your path, I invite you to join me the next time the new moon or the full moon rolls around. And if you happen to be on Instagram, you can find me at Mindful Mystic. Feel free to tag me in any of your stories, in your pictures. I would love to see your candle magic rituals in action and hear all about your results. Um, and also, again, you can find me online at mindfulmystic.com. I have a lot of information there about Reiki and sound healing and crystals. Um, so I look forward to connecting with all of you. So until next time, I wish you an abundance of love, light, peace, prosperity, protection, and wisdom. Have a wonderful day.